Hi, welcome to Think Tech. We're raising public awareness on technology, energy, diversity, and globalism. This show is Center Stage. I'm your host, Donna Blanchard, proud managing director of Kumukuhua Theater. And we are coming to you from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu, very near Kumukuhua Theater. I am thrilled, you know, I often say, I'm really lucky that I have this talk show. Today is one of those days when I feel like I get to have this wonderful, conversation with two people I'm really anxious to talk with and they're my captives here they can't leave until the show's over we're going to talk with Larissa Fasthorse and Ty Defoe of uh, their company is called Indigenous Direction and they are here on the island teaching a playwriting workshop this weekend welcome Larissa and Ty Thank you for having Thank us. You. Thank you very much for being here. You've come <laughs> across the ocean for this workshop that is um, uh, put together by uh, the Pa'i Foundation, Kumukuhua mm -hmm. Theater, and HPU. Mm -hmm. And um, let's start by saying that it's a playwriting workshop for anyone, any level uh, uh, of writing mm -hmm. ability, for anyone of any cultural background, yes. and your specialty is in writing from your um, Na'au, I want to say, but <laughs> writing from your cultural, from from who you are. Is yes, that correct? Mm -hmm. Is that a good way to yeah. say that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. How, how did that start? Huh? <laughs> 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 well, um, we first uh, started doing workshops through um, the Alaska Native Heritage Center and the Alaska Native Playwrights Project. That's when we first started doing these types of um, culturally specific workshops um, that were for at that time were just for indigenous people, um, for Alaska Natives, and they brought together different artists that had different levels of experience. Some weren't writers at all, some were just visual artists. And um, Ed Bourgeois, who's now at Pa'ai, with Auntie Vicky, he um, initiated that program funded by the Ford Foundation. That's how we first started, we've known each other a long time before that, but that's how we first started doing these sorts of workshops. And now we've done them with um, populations on the um, Pine Ridge Reservation um, and also in California, and now we're doing it here with the Hawaiian people. Oh, that is so awesome. Mm -hmm. That is so awesome all the way around. I've <laughs> always felt like, you know, I'm originally from Northwest Indiana, and I uh, fell in love with the idea of, of place-based theater, theater, you know, coming from the people who are right here when I initially learned about Joe Carson and her work. Yeah. And uh, wanted, I recognized that, you know, in any place that you are, there are people and experiences that only happen there. And there are, there is the experience of this group of people, the Blanchard clan, you know, when they moved from Pennsylvania to Indiana and, and what happened there. That the, all, of the, all of these um, stories create, uh, are the fodder for unique theater pieces, right? For all of us. Yeah. Particularly when you look at indigenous cultures, there are stories that really, really, really need to be told. And I, I often say this, and I'm, I'm still embarrassed about it, but when I moved here, I thought Hawaii was just another state. Hmm. Yeah. I'm sure there are a lot of people who think that Alaska is just another state. Right. And there are people within, uh, you know, we, we grew up around um, a lot of Native American uh, um, uh, tribes in Wisconsin and mm -hmm. Michigan. I, I really didn't know what was going on. And if my family had the opportunity to go see a piece of theater and learn, what an awesome way to learn. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I'm really glad that you're doing this. Yeah. Okay. Um, so tell me, and before we go too much further, I want to say there are still a few openings in the workshop, and if people are interested, they can get in touch with um, Kumukuhua Theater, and you can find information on the website, kumukuhua.org. Um, so you are both also connected to Theater Communications Group, yes? yes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In what capacities? So I, I recently completed a fellowship there doing uh, equity, diversity, inclusion, and I do a lot of uh, facilitation at the National Theater Conference, as well as um, you know working with regional theaters across the country. So it's another also connection that Larissa and I have, um, and Larissa is on the board there, the national yeah. board. Yeah. Awesome. So when you talk about inclusion theater, can you break that down a little bit more? <laughs> That's not a subject I studied in college. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? I, yeah, I think when I refer to that, it's the very same thing I think that we are talking about, the idea of 
uh, folks from many different cultures and different heritages, but also other ways that a singular individual can identify. And I think whether that's like connected to the land and their social identity location coming together, the idea of inclusion is taking a person in the, their whole selves and also using that with um, the, the rich like culture that makes up a singular individual. So. so the theater pieces that you are generally a part of helping to create are more, do they take uh, one particular form over another? I'm not even asking that question very well. I apologize for not framing that right. So when you go see an Edward Albee piece, mm -hmm. this is, you're going to see a, a, a day or moments in the life of someone. Um, sometimes when you go see works that are more um, place or culturally based, from what I've right. seen, you see more vignettes or little tastes of mm -hmm. life. Do you, ha do you tend to lean one way more than the other? Um, you know, I think, I mean, I, I as a playwright, as an artist, I, I personally, Ty and I do very different styles of work. Um, on our own practice, my, my work is very naturalistic and very realistic because what I'm doing is taking um, very specific um, often, not always, but often indigenous perspectives and cultures and um, using the uh, psychological means to get through to my viewer because truly every, all of these issues that we all share are just humanity, right? They're all just human issues and they're universal to every single person on the planet, whether you are from a specific cultural um, background that you're aware of or not. Everyone is, but not everyone has the awareness. And so for me personally, everything that I do is incredibly universal and it, and it is an Edward Albee play, but we don't see it that way because we, we tend to take indigenous stories and kind of pigeonhole them as, as a culture separate from ours, mm -hmm. whoever mm -hmm. ours is, um, when actually, you know, my goal is to make it as universal as possible. And, and I think that's um, something that um, it, it usually takes people a little while to figure out. They're like, oh, wait, but it was funny, and it was this, and it was that, and, and it spoke to me, and it, it confuses them because they're used to kind of putting it in a separate box when really we're just writing the same plays, just from some different cultural perspectives. Gotcha, yeah, the, um, that's why I'm in love with this type of theater because I feel mm -hmm. like you cannot hate someone mm -hmm. when you recognize that, oh, I would do the same thing in that situation. Mm -hmm. that, that's the beauty of it for me. Yeah. Well, it's also like the idea too that we are, we're all so similar than we are different and the more nuanced you can go with a story, mm -hmm. the more universal it can become because the, like a lot of these stories with indigenous people, native folks, and you know, others that haven't been heard before who haven't had the chance to do so, that's sort of also what we're trying to uplift and create a container for. Um, mm -hmm. Because we know of Edward Albee, but we don't know of you know, across the country, like other native or indigenous playwrights that exist like Larissa or um, you know, across the country. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, so you've got your work cut out for you. Yeah, yeah, definitely exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so when you did this workshop in Alaska, something mm -hmm. crazy like 30 plays came out of that? Yeah, yeah, it was a lot. And actually I ended up, it was really fortunate this past year, I got to direct the play that I was first paired with as a dramaturg mm -hmm. in the very first 10 pages by Vera Starbird Bedard and then just has World Perver at Perseverance Theatre Company this past year and I got to direct it. So I got to be with that play from the very first 10 pages, four years later, to its full production, and it's getting all kinds of attention now and getting published, and mm -hmm. it's doing really well, so we're really excited. That's kind of been, I mean, there have been, a, not that that's the only way, anything you do is success. You know, just getting something on the page is success mm -hmm. and exciting, and we celebrate that, but it was, it was kind of exciting that just happened this year, that we finally, we had the first full production out of that Oh, group. wow, yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah. And it was the same, th this workshop, we're having sort of a meet and greet and some mm -hmm. information on yeah. Thursday, yeah. but it's just Friday evening, Saturday during the day, and mm -hmm. Sunday during the day. Mm -hmm. yes. And out of that, um, uh, out of that in Alaska, you came out with, I think, like 32 plays. Yeah. Did you do a lot of work with these playwrights in follow-up after that weekend? Yes, mm -hmm. actually, we were on um, doing a lot of long-term mentoring with people. Um, Ty and I are both, I grew up in South Dakota, he grew up in Wisconsin, so we're, we're both know that um, hardest thing in working in a remote area is having that support group and and not that you don't have a wonderful support group here in Honolulu but sometimes it takes someone from the outside to come and kind of create a safe space for you to express yourself and and keep kind of poking at you in a way your friends may not want to to keep you going and, and we hope to you know we're, we're definitely continue to be resources for populations we work with that want to continue with the work 
Oh, that's wonderful. It's like bringing pen pal back to, (laughs) (laughs) and redefining what that is, you know, like phoning a friend. So um, I think Mm -hmm. it's it's really wonderful because also like it's, these are workshops and it, but it's also a way of communicating and sharing culture with like, I feel like when we keep in touch with folks, it's like we learn just as much as they're learning too. So it's more of like an exchange of like humanity. Oh yeah. Creating space. Yeah. And that's what's gonna, if something's gonna bring about world Mm -hmm. peace, I think that's what's gonna do it. (laughs) Sharing our stories at that Mm -hmm. level of Mm -hmm. of, uh, real understanding. Mm -hmm. We have to go to our first break. Okay. Went really fast. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna be right back. Please stay with us. We'll be right back talking more about indigenous direction. Aloha, I'm Richard Emery, host of Condo Insider, a weekly. Th- Thursday show at three o'clock that goes all summer long talking about issues living in a condo association. Each week we bring experts to talk about the rights and obligations of owners and boards of directors to successfully run their condominium. It's a great educational show, answers a lot of questions. We hope you'll visit us sometime. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. Start your Pauhana weekend off with the show where I talk to people about issues pertinent to Hawaii. You can see my previous shows at my blog, kawilucas.com, and also on ThinkTex. Hi, my name is Kim Lau, and I'm the host of Hawaii Rising. You can watch me every other Monday at 4 p.m. Hi, welcome back. We are live. This is Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Network. Um, If you would ever like to join us in the studio here in Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu, you may do that. Just email J, that's J-A-Y, at thinktechhawaii.com. If you have a question or something that you would like to add to the conversation, you can do that live if you're watching live by tweeting us at thinktechhi. Okay, we're back with Larissa Fast Horse and Ty Defoe. And if we could um, tell us a little bit about your process as we go through the weekend. And I also want to mention the Ford Foundation. I forgot to yes. say that earlier. The Ford Foundation is responsible for mm-hmm. bringing you out here, really. Mm-hmm. And, um, and also enabling us to do this workshop for it's 20 bucks a head mm-hmm. to take mm-hmm. it. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. Okay, so what's, what is your thought process behind your process. Mm-hmm. How about mm-hmm. that? <laughs> you want to start? You want me to go? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so one thing that we've learned, um, and I, sh- I want to be clear that this particular workshop is not just for Indigenous people. It's for anybody. Um, I just want to be clear on that one. Anyone is invited. What we do introduce into the room um, that's unusual is a lot of Indigenous protocol. Um, we will start with um, Hawaiian protocol um, on Thursday for the reception, and, and we continue to use Indigenous protocol. We try to de- decolonize the room in as many ways as we can. Mm-hmm. Um, we really work to um, bring people's indigen- whole selves, Indigenous selves, into the room and have found with people that are not Indigenous, you know, they find it an incredibly enriching process and, mm-hmm. and a way to take something um, Western and traditional and kind of look at it from a different lens and from a different perspective. So everything we do kind of starts with that that impetus and although non-indigenous folks are absolutely welcome to come um, I I think they I, they should just prepare they'll maybe have some unusual um, ways of working that I, we hope enhance them both as people and artists yeah and and to add on to that too it's almost like you know redefining various ways of working for so long I think with theater making with art making with storytelling it's you know been overtaken by one dominant culture and so the idea here is to evaluate people in the room and to allow people to express themselves in the way that they feel comfortable with Mm -hmm. oh cool yeah and I I mean we're both I started as a ballet classical ballet dancer and then went into writing um Ty is a multidisciplinary artist and everything (laughs) Uh, puppets dancing, singing, writing. Oh, so yeah, he's a composer, music. he does everything. Um, so we really are open to helping a big part of our workshops and the format of our workshops is really meeting the room where it is. And, and we don't come in imposing, this is 
you know, what we're going to do, and this is the structure is solid. We, we obviously have some structure in mind for us, but we very much find out where the room is, where the individuals are, and, and we teach in such a way that we can um, meet each person where they are and help them achieve the goals they want to achieve in, in this quick time we have together. Um, it's just a start, obviously. It's only mm -hmm. you know, two and a half days, but we really try to make sure that everybody can get what they need to get out of, out of the, this time together. That's amazing. That's uh, I, it. Must be a really rewarding way to work. Also, man, you have to be on it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's nice that you're working together. So if one yeah. of you is needing a little bit of support, the other's there. How long mm -hmm. have you been working together? Wow, well, it's been a long time now. <laughs> we first yeah. met, I think, ten. It's been ten years, I think. Yeah, like ten yeah. years or so. I feel yeah. like Lewis oh, and wow. I go back into the earth. Yeah, into the sky. yeah we officially met. <laughs> That's how long it's been. So, yeah, nice. and we and we were brought together through theater and working on projects together, and we've continued to work on both theater projects and then also through our work together at TCG and through um, Indigenous Direction and Plurals. Yeah, we just we've worked with so many different organizations together, and uh, it's just natural for us to create our own company and formalize our teamwork. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what does what what does Indigenous Direction do? What's your mm -hmm. mission? So Indigenous Direction, it um, consults uh, an Indigenous Native protocols. What we do is we work with theaters across the country, but we also work uh, in film and other mediums and disciplines, sort of um, consulting and shepherding along uh, new ways of making theater, whether it's um, internal at a theater company or whether it's um, on the stages. We also do things like advise on script consulting with people if they needed that for film. Um, we sort of are bridge builders and interpreters for people if they're looking to extend outreach in their, in their community, whether it's um, searching for funding, whether it's looking for indigenous people. So it can go from something very small to something very large, depending on what the institution or company needs. Um, we're definitely huge advocates of uh, building bridges and also um, excited about uh, interpretation of what that could mean for a particular institution because, as we said, and to bring it back, the ground at which you stand, the earth at which you are on, it's different for everybody, and we want to also uplift and recognize that, too. Oh. I know there, there have to be a lot of companies that don't even realize that they need you. <laughs> right? We like to believe that. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say this. I absolutely love the show Orange is the New Black. Yeah. Have you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yeah. You've had time oh, yeah. to see it. Well, the, in the last season, the girl who's supposed to be from Hawaii mm -hmm. clearly was not from Hawaii and didn't mm. say the name Hawaii correctly. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure the director, the casting director, and maybe even that actress didn't even realize there's, a, there's an entire way of standing on the earth that mm -hmm. is different when you are from Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And there is... It's different. They just mm -hmm. didn't know. I'm sure they just didn't know. It didn't mm -hmm. keep me from calling them out on Facebook. <laughs> Good for <But> you. <laughs> well, oftentimes we, we live in this culture of feeling fear to ask the question. It's scary to ask the right. question. So I think also what we're there for, too, is to provide a, a common ground for people to come and ask those questions that where we can in, be an interpreter for or, you know, an intermediator for folks, too. So that's something, a space we wanted to create. Yeah. That's good, and I hope that more and more people recognize the need for, for that. And did I hear you correctly? You also work with organizations on like, the architecture of the organization itself? Um, well, with uh, organizations that are looking into either um, creating programming, like they want to create a new initiative to outreach their indigenous community or work with indigenous artists, we actually help them from the, gr from the beginning create that program in their organization or that wing of their organization. Oh. Um, the other thing we do though is we have done, we do protocol training within organizations and mm -hmm. help kind of retrain them on how uh, basic protocols give them cultural competency in dealing with the indigenous populations in their area. We of course don't pretend, you know, we represent three tribes between us. We don't pretend to know all indigenous things, but there are certain um, uh, no knowings we have from all of our work we do with so many different indigenous populations, and we're also facilitators to bring indi the local indigenous population in and make sure that if you know everything gets very specific to where that theater stands or where that company stands, and so that they understand the protocol, they understand how to engage with them, they understand how to open, even just open their show with a proper acknowledgement of the ground on which they stand mm -hmm. and who those people are that, that, that have given them, uh, reluctantly, that space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And people don't know what they don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So if anyone's looking for like professional training development, that's also something that mm -hmm. we're, you know, looking to formally do that inside of an institution as well. Oh, so. very cool. So it seems to me that there is a lot of movement in the country to theater pieces that are more devised, I interactive, perhaps um, more place-based work. Do you, do you see that, or am I just imagining that? Oh, no, definitely. <laughs> I mean, I just finished a piece um, with Cornerstone Theater Company, who's been doing this forever, but we did a large immersive piece that was um, done with our, not only with the community and through community, but um, it really depended on a lot of input. Every week it was always changing from community. And, um, and I think, yeah, there's definitely so much more work being done in that way, or group devised work, ensemble work. Um, mm -hmm. We both work with a lot of companies that do that sort of thing as artists, and it's something we, we support for sure. Oh, yeah, I mean, the way the world's going now with different, you know, social activity and shootings and hatred and violence and, you know, all these things that are going on, I feel like art is a really great way of expressing. It's a great way of connecting people. And I feel like uh, devising work, working with community and teaming up to form a community, a safe haven for youth. I mean, that's, I don't know, that to me, that's what it's all about. And devising those stories because more often than not, I think people must feel that they're not heard. And so I think it's art's a great way to express and to be heard. Yeah. Well, just here, in, since the two weeks I've been in Honolulu, I've spoken with or, or advised on three devising, devised work projects that are happening right here in Honolulu. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's amazing. You know, yeah. different artists that are starting up collectives and doing that kind of work. It's really exciting to see. It is. It is exciting to see. And I, there are a lot of people who are still always going to want to be able to go to a theater and watch Oklahoma mm -hmm. or yeah, Fiddler sure. on the Roof. Those poor shows. Those are always the ones that I think <laughs> of. But <laughs> uh, I also, I think that there is a, a new wave of theater goer that is looking yeah. for something that is a, a little more personal mm -hmm. and uh, reactive to the world that we live in mm -hmm. yes, right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't, I there are a lot of people who don't view themselves as artists, so they don't get involved in the work, they're hesitant to get involved in the work. And there is something so magical about being able to not only express yourself, but to get inside the head of someone else to uh, I express why they are doing I think everyone should f try to find an opportunity to play a villain. <laughs> Just try to find an opportunity to play a villain, because to do it well, you have to find why. Yeah. And then once you understand someone else's why on that level, it makes you want to understand other people's why, and it makes when someone has road rage, it makes you think maybe they're having a really bad day, mm -hmm. r rather than stick finger and yeah. You know. <laughs> and I feel like these, you know, sort of teachings are in ancient cultures, like these sort of messages. And I feel like for so long, for thousands of years, people have told these stories with these sorts of like protocols and messages and now it's like listening and defining a new way a contemporary way of like retelling the stories and also mm -hmm. like of the individual so we can i don't know make it a better place to live in for each other i think so yeah i think it's yeah, up to right? artists to make that happen <laughs> yeah i think we should be looking at politicians yeah i think <laughs> artists are the ones who are going to have to make that yeah. happen yeah oh so we just have a couple of minutes left mm -hmm. but if i may put you on the spot for a moment i would love to hear about um, anything in the 10 years that you've been working together, what has surprised you? Have you had any like aha moments that have really stuck with you in this work? Mm. Wow, um, narrowing it down uh, <laughs> is the problem. <laughs> There's always so many things. Yeah. I think, you know, one of the biggest things that I keep relearning again and again um, is how, um, how much we need to create the space for people to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. and, and how essential that is. You need to make a mistake to learn. If you, if you can't screw up, you, you just sit paralyzed. And so a lot of what I do with theater the many theater companies I work or that we work with um, is, is creating that safe space to try to make a mistake, to screw up, to regroup, to go forward differently. Mm -hmm. And, and um, that's incredibly hard, getting harder and harder to find in today. People are very black and white and not allowing for for a learning process and so I hope that our work and, and the work we do individually can help people do that because that's the only way we're going to learn. That's awesome. That's beautiful. Yeah. 
what she said. What she said. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope in this, in our um, world now where, you know, people are broadcasting live on Facebook or uh, on Periscope and mm -hmm. we're seeing so much more of people's thoughts immediately, there is a lot of room to, people are screwing up all the time. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, yeah. and you can look at someone's post on Facebook and see that they edited it mm -hmm. because they spelled something incorrectly. Okay, we didn't mm -hmm. used to have that in our world, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. It went, you had a lot of time to put together whatever is going out there, and you didn't mm -hmm. see f people fumbling and bumbling on camera like I do all the time <laughs> because people didn't have internet shows. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So now that we live in this world, I would hope we become more accepting of people as we, re as we watch people make mistakes mm -hmm. and say, oh, okay. Yeah, I did that yesterday morning, you know, on my internet show. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Did you know yeah. when, you know, so much yeah. funding is at stake and the funding is shrinking, 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 people are so scared. Oh, you know, they're so, yeah. institutions are terrified that they're going to say the wrong thing. And unfortunately, what that creates is inaction and not including new populations they don't know about and not doing um, the work they know they should do, but they don't know how to start it because they're afraid of creating a mistake that becomes public that affects funding. And, you know, and, mm -hmm. and so I think the more we can create that room for each other. Empathy. It goes back to what you said before, empathy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the other side of it when you have to be worried mm -hmm. about funding. Well, I, we have to wrap up, but on yeah. that note, I would like to thank the Ford Foundation for mm -hmm. supporting um, all of us to bring you out here. Mm -hmm. Anyone who's interested in the workshop should contact uh, Kumukuhua Theater. Mm -hmm. It is this Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and you said if someone is able, only able to make it to some of those, we, we can accommodate that. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, kumukuhua.org to get information or um, contact us about that. I uh, thank Ty and Larissa very much for being here. I thank you for watching. I would also like to thank Rich Prapus, who's our floor manager. He's right over there. Thank you, Rich. Mm -hmm. And Zuri Bender, our studio overlord, who is also in my ear. And I'd also like to thank Jay Fidel, who somehow manages to put all of this together. We will see you next week on Center Stage. Bye. Thank you.